Agriculture is one of the biggest industries in India. Not only this, it generates significant number of employment in our country. Features like geographical conditions, weather or other climatic conditions, soil quality are diverse in different places of India and hence a wide range of crop varieties can be cultivated in our state and hence a crop production and management we will be learning about some of the traditional and new age practices employed by farmers in the field of agriculture. Human beings including all animals are heterotrophs which means we cannot synthesize our own food. On the other hand plants are autotrophic in nature. They can synthesize their own food by capturing sunlight and converting it into organic food. So we can say that human beings and animals are either directly or indirectly dependent on plants for their food and energy requirement. Population is increasing day by day and hence it has led to an ever increasing demand for food and livestock. So how are we able to produce food crops or livestock on such a large scale? This we are going to learn in this chapter. In India, as already mentioned, the climatic conditions and the quality of soil differs from place to place. In fact, there are small patches of land in which the soil quality differs a lot and hence the vegetation cover on this soil also differs a lot. India majorly falls under the tropical zone of the climate and hence there is untimely rainfall and the climatic conditions also differs a lot. In India, majorly crops can be classified into two categories based on the season of cultivation that is rabi crop and karif crops. Before going to the details of these type of crops and their examples, let us first understand what are crops. When plants of the same kind are grown and cultivated at one place on a large scale, it is called a crop. Let's say if a crop of wheat if it's cultivated on the same piece of land then it is called as a wheat crop. Now let us understand what are Kharif crops and Rabi crops. The crops which are sown in the rainy season are called Kharif crops. The rainy season in India is generally from June to September. Some of the examples of Kharif crop includes paddy, maize, soya bean, groundnut, cotton, etc. Rabi crops. The crops which are grown in winter season are called rabi crops. Their time period is generally from the month of October to March. Examples of rabi crops include wheat, gram, pea, mustard and linseed. Besides these, pulses and vegetables are grown during summer at many places in India. Cultivation of crops involves several activities which are carried out by farmers over a long period of time. These activities or tasks which are performed by the farmers are collectively referred to as agricultural practices. It is very important to note that these steps must be carried out in a sequential and systematic manner. So let us list down what are the steps involved in agricultural practices. It involves preparation of soil, sowing, adding manure and fertilizers, irrigation, protecting from weeds, harvesting and storage. So let us understand each one of these steps in some detail. Preparation of soil. Preparation of soil is the first step before growing any crop. It is one of the most important tasks in agriculture. In this, it is very important to turn the soil and loosen it. This allows the roots to penetrate deep into the soil. The loose soil allows the roots to breathe easily and even when they grow deep into the soil. The loosened soil helps in the growth of earthworms and microbes present in the soil. These microbes are friends of farmers since they further turn and loosen the soil and adds humus to it. Soil contains minerals, water, air and some living organisms. In addition to these, dead plants and animals 
get decomposed by the soil microbes. In this way, various nutrients held in the dead organisms are released back to the soil. These nutrients are again absorbed by the plants. Since only a few centimeters of the top layer of the soil supports plant growth, turning and loosening of soil brings the nutrient-rich soil to the top layer so that plants can use these nutrients easily. Thus, turning and loosening of the soil is a very important task for cultivation of crops. The process of loosening and turning of the soil is called tilling or plowing. This is done by using a plow. Plows are made of wood or iron. If the soil is very dry, it may be needed watering before plowing. The plowed field may have big pieces of soil called crumbs. It is necessary to break these crumbs with a plank. The field is leveled for sowing as well as for irrigation purposes. The leveling of the soil can be done with the help of a leveler. Sometimes, manure is added to the soil before tilling which helps in proper mixing of manure with the soil. This soil is then watered before sowing seeds. So from these activities, we can understand why preparation of soil is a very important part of agriculture. Now let us have a look into some of the implements which are used for preparation of soil. This includes a plow, a hoe and a cultivator. So let us understand each one of these. Plow is being used since ancient times for tilling the soil, adding fertilizers to the crop and removing the weeds and scraping of soil. This implement is made of wood and is drawn by a pair of bulls or other animals. It contains a strong triangular iron strip called plowshare. The main part of the plow is a long log of wood which is called a plow shaft. There is a handle at one end of the shaft. The other end is attached to a beam which is placed on the bull's necks. One pair of bulls and a man can easily operate the plow. However, the indigenous wooden plow is nowadays increasingly being replaced by iron plows. The next is hoe. Hoe is a simple tool which is used for removing weeds and for loosening the soil. It has a long rod of wood or iron, a strong broad and bent plate of iron is fixed to one of its ends and works like a blade. It is pulled by animals. The third instrument is cultivator. Cultivator is a mechanical implement for breaking up the ground and uprooting weeds. Nowadays, plowing is done by tractor driven cultivator. The use of cultivator saves a lot of labor and time. The next step which is involved in agricultural practice is sowing. Before sowing seeds, it is very important to ensure that we select for good quality seeds. Farmers usually prefer seeds which give high yields of crops. So how do they perform this activity of differentiating between a good quality or a good variety seed and bad quality seeds? Good quality seeds are usually healthy and are of a superior variety. Let us perform an activity a very simple activity to understand how we can separate good quality healthy seeds from bad quality seeds. Take a beaker and fill half of it with water. Put a handful of wheat seeds and stir well. Wait for some time. Some of the seeds will float on water because these seeds are lighter than the other seeds. The seeds which are heavier will sink at the bottom of the beaker. This is because Damaged seeds become hollow and are thus lighter and they will float on water. This is a very good method for separating good healthy seeds from the damaged ones. Now let us look at some of the tools which are used for sowing seeds by farmers. Traditional tool. The tool used traditionally for sowing seeds is shaped like a funnel. The seeds are filled into the funnel, passed down through two or three pipes having sharp ends. These end pierces into the soil and places the seeds appropriately in the soil. Another method or tool used is seed drill. Nowadays, seed drill is being used for sowing with the help of tractors. 
This tool sows the seeds uniformly at proper distances and depths. It ensures that seeds get covered by the soil after sowing, which prevents damage caused by birds. Sowing by using a seed drill saves time and labor. It is important to maintain appropriate distance between the seeds to avoid overcrowding of plants. This allows the plants to get sufficient sunlight, nutrients and water from the soil. Even though in many instances there is overcrowding of plants and sometimes a few plants have to be removed to prevent overcrowding. The third step which we are going to discuss in agricultural practice is adding manure and fertilizers to the soil. Like human beings and animals, plants also require nutrients for their healthy growth. Whenever we add manures and fertilizers in the form of nutrients to the soil, these nutrients will be absorbed by the roots of the plants and it will be passed on to different plant parts for their healthy growth. If we cultivate continuously on the soil or on the same piece of land, variety of crops again and again season after season, then the soil becomes deficient in these nutrients and hence it becomes very important to replenish or refill these nutrients in the soil for healthy growth of the crops. Addition of manure to the fields to replenish the soil with nutrients is a process called manuring. Improper or insufficient manuring results in weak plants or crops. Now let us first understand what are manures. Manure is an organic substance obtained from the decomposition of plant or animal wastes. Farmers dump plant and animal waste in pits at open places and allow it to decompose. The decomposition is caused by some microorganisms which are already present in the soil and the waste matter. The decomposed matter is then used as organic manure on the fields. Fertilizers are chemical substances which are rich in particular nutrient. Fertilizers are produced in factories and these are inorganic in nature. Some of the examples of fertilizers which are commonly used in crop fields are urea, ammonium sulfate, superphosphate, potash and NPK. NPK stands for nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. These are the three main elements which are required for good vegetative growth of the plants. The use of fertilizers has helped farmers to get better yield of crops such as wheat, paddy and maize. However, excessive use of fertilizers has made the soil less fertile. Fertilizers have also become a source of water pollution. In order to maintain the fertility of the soil, we have to substitute fertilizers by organic manure or leave the field uncultivated in between two crop seasons. The use of manure improves soil texture as well as its water retaining capacity. It replenishes the soil with all the required nutrients and acts as a soil conditioner. It also improves the water holding capacity of the soil. Another method of replenishing the soil with nutrients is following cropping patterns. One of the cropping patterns is called crop rotation. This can be done by growing different crops alternately on the same piece of land. Farmers grow legumes as fodder in one season and wheat in the next season. This helps in replenishment of the soil with nitrogen content. Hence, farmers are being encouraged to adopt this practice of crop rotation for replenishing the soil with nitrogen. How is this nitrogen replenished in the soil? We know that a bacterium called rhizobium is present in the nodules of the roots of leguminous plants. These microorganisms fix the atmospheric nitrogen and make it available in the soil. These will be converted to nitrates and nitrites and these nitrates and nitrites will be ultimately absorbed by the soil and then by the roots of the plants and will be provided to the plants. Thus, soil gets replenished with nitrogen. From this discussion, we can understand that manures are better than fertilizers. So, let us list down few of the advantages of manure over fertilizers. The organic manure is considered better than fertilizers because it enhances the water holding capacity of the soil. Secondly, it makes the soil porous due to which exchange of gases becomes easy. It increases the number of friendly microbes in the soil 
and lastly it improves the texture of the soil now let us list down some of the important differences between manures and fertilizers fertilizer is an inorganic salt manure is a natural substance obtained by the decomposition of cattle dung human waste and plant residues a fertilizer is prepared in factories manure can be prepared in the fields a fertilizer does not provide any humus to the soil manure provides a lot of humus to the soil fertilizers are very rich in plant nutrients like nitrogen phosphorus and potassium manure is relatively less rich in plant nutrients now let us discuss the next step involved in agricultural practice that is irrigation india is largely dependent on rainfall for agricultural purposes or for growing crops however because of untimely rainfalls the crops are not harvested properly or they are not able to produce good amount of crops sometimes there will be too scarce of a rainfall sometimes it can be too much of a rainfall which results in flood and hence it becomes necessary to involve some other practices which can artificially provide water to the crop fields and result in good growth of crops so let us understand what are the traditional practices and the modern methods which are employed for irrigation the supply of water to the crops at different intervals is called irrigation sources of irrigation include wells tube wells ponds lakes rivers dams and canals now let us go through some of the traditional methods which are used for irrigation this primarily involves cattle or human labor so these methods are cheaper but less efficient these methods include moat chain pump dekli and rahat moat or pulley system is a manual irrigation method by this method water is directly taken out of wells with the help of pulley and is used to irrigate fields chain pump consists of two large wheels connected by an endless chain the bottom wheel is half immersed in water source as the wheel is turned the connected buckets dip into the pool and pick up water the chain then lifts them to the upper wheel where the water from the buckets is transferred to the pool the chain then carries the empty buckets back down to the refilled and the process continues dekli is a system in which a rope and bucket is connected to pole to obtain water from well they connect rope and bucket on one end of a heavy stick and a heavy counterweight at the other end rahat is a method of irrigation where water is drawn out of wells by animals animals like cow buffalo oxen etc are connected to the wheels animals move and rotate the wheel leading to drawing water from the well these traditional methods of irrigation which we saw just now are highly labor intensive and less efficient and hence farmer adapted for new practices which will be using water economically and it is very useful for such systems where water is very less available in some of the places in india let's see what are these modern methods of irrigation sprinkler system this system is more useful on the uneven land where sufficient water is not available the perpendicular pipes having rotating nozzles on the top are joined to the main pipeline at regular intervals when water is allowed to flow through the main pipe under pressure with the help of a pump it escapes from the rotating nozzles it gets sprinkled on the crop as if it is raining sprinkler is very useful for sandy soil another method adopted is drip system in this system the water falls drop by drop just at the position of the roots and hence the name drip system it is the best technique for watering fruit plants gardens and trees the system provides water to the plants drop by drop water is not at all wasted 
It is a boon in regions where availability of water is poor. The next step which is involved in agricultural practice is protection of crops from weeds. What are weeds? Weeds are undesirable or unwanted plants which grow along with our crops. These weeds grow naturally and it is very important to remove them because they compete with the crops for the nutrients, sunlight and water. Some of the weeds can also be poisonous for human beings and animals. So let us see what are the different methods employed for removal of weeds. Removal of weeds is known as weeding. Let's see what are the methods employed. Tilling is one of the methods used for weeding. Tilling before sowing of crops helps in uprooting and killing of weeds which may then dry up and get mixed with the soil. The best time for removal of weeds is before they produce flowers and seeds. Another method is manual removal. Manual removal includes physical removal of weeds by uprooting or cutting them close to the ground from time to time. This is done with the help of an implement called khurpi. A seed drill is also used to uproot weeds. The best method to remove weeds is by using weedy sites. Weedy sites are certain chemicals which are used to control the growth of weeds. One of the best example of weedy site used is 2,4-D. These are sprayed in the fields to kill the weeds. They do not damage the crops. The weedy sites are sprayed during the vegetative growth of the weeds before flowering and seed formation. Spraying of weedy sites may affect the health of farmers. So, they should use these chemicals very carefully. They should cover their nose and mouth with a piece of a cloth during spraying of these chemicals. The next step which is involved in agricultural practice is harvesting. After sowing the seeds and taking care of the plants for their growth, now it is the time to root the crops. Harvesting is the process of removal of or uprooting of the mature crops. Harvesting takes around 3 to 4 months for cereal crops. That is the time period between the sowing of the seed and harvesting is around 3 to 4 months for cereal crops. However, this time period may differ from crops to crops. Let us understand what are the different methods used for harvesting a crop. Harvesting in our country is done by using sickle manually or by a machine called harvester. In the harvested crop, the grain seeds need to be separated from the chaff. This process of separating chaff from the grain is called threshing. This is carried out with the help of a machine called combine, which is in fact a combined harvester and thresher. Farmers with small holdings of land do this separation of grain and chaff with the help of a machine called winnowing. The next step or the last step which is involved in agricultural practice is storage. After harvesting, the seeds or the grains or the crops must be protected or must be stored in an area which should not be affected by any kinds of infects or any kind of infections or any kind of moisture. Let's see what are the steps involved in storage. Storage of produce is an important task. If the crop grains are to be kept for longer time, they should be safe from moisture, insects, rats and microorganisms. If freshly harvested grains or seeds are stored without drying, they may get spoiled or attacked by microorganisms, losing their germination capacity. Hence, before storing them, the grains are properly dried in the sun to reduce their moisture content. This prevents the attack by insect pests, bacteria and fungi. Farmers store the grains in jute bags or metallic bins. However, Large-scale storage of grains is done in silos and granaries to protect them from pests like rats and insects. Sometimes, dried neem leaves are used for storing food grains at home. For storing large quantities of grains in big godowns, specific chemical treatments are required to protect them from pests and microorganisms. These chemicals are mixed with the grains and then stored. Like plants, Animals also provide us with food. They provide us with important nutrients like carbohydrates, proteins, fats, minerals and nutrients. And hence it becomes necessary 
to produce livestock on a large scale for this we practice something which is called as animal husbandry animal husbandry is a science which deals with the rearing of animals for the production of animals and animal products like milk meat and egg it includes day to day care selective breeding and raising of livestock branches of animal husbandry include dairy dairy involves rearing of cows sheep goats primarily for milk production poultry refers to the rearing of domestic fowls including chickens turkeys geese and ducks for the production of meat and eggs aquaculture is another branch of animal husbandry which is related to artificial rearing and culture of fishes and other related species another branch of animal husbandry includes sericulture and apiculture which involves the rearing of insects sericulture involves the rearing of silk worms for obtaining silk and apiculture involves rearing of honey bees for obtaining honey and bee wax let us now summarize the topics which we learned in this chapter we studied about the different patterns of crops depending on their season that is kharif crop and rabi crops with their examples different steps involved in agricultural practices which involved some of the traditional methods and modern methodologies and last but not the least a brief account on animal husbandry hey thanks for watching this video drop a like if you enjoyed it do share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe this channel